In this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate the difference between destructive effects in Audacity and the new non-destructive stackable effects that are available. So don't go anywhere. As always, I've got an amazing screen open here before us. I'm running Audacity version 3.2.0, the beta version. And the track that's in here is what I'm going to use to demonstrate the difference between destructive editing and non-destructive editing. It really boils down to this. Non-destructive editing doesn't touch the waveform. Destructive editing manipulates, changes the waveform. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So let's come over here and let's select this entire track. And then I'm going to come up to the effect drop-down menu which is still there, by the way, that hasn't gone away. And let's put some filter curve EQ on this. I'm not sure what this is for here, but it looks like a good one. Let me move it out of the way just a little bit so you can see what happens. When I hit apply, it's going to, it's going to change the look of the waveform. It's going to embed that equalizer into the waveform itself. And what that does is it changes the waveform. So let me show you. If I click apply, you'll see that the waveform changed considerably. Now at this point, if I were to save this project and close out Audacity and then come back tomorrow and open it or later today or op and open it or 30 seconds from now and open it, I can't get that back. That equalization is embedded in the waveform and I can't do anything about it. That's destructive editing. So let me show you what's new in Audacity version 3.2 in terms of non-destructive editing. I'm going to press Command Z to undo what I just did. And if you're running Windows, again, it's Control Z. It's the universal keystroke for undo the last command. And now instead of using the drop down effect, which we know is destructive to the waveform, let's go over and let's put on a real time effect. And in order to do that, you'll see this effects button over here on the left side of the, of the track. Each track has that. If I had more than one track open here, you would see, well, actually I do have more than one track open here. Let me lower this one down here, even though I've got it muted. You can see that each track has its own effects button on it. By the way, I did this in case I make a mistake. I can always go back to the original track. That's how much I trust myself. Anyway, I digress. If I want to put a real-time stackable effect on this that isn't going to, to touch or affect the waveform, I simply come up to the effects button. And when I come up to the effects button, it opens up a second pane on that left side that allows me to add different effects. And in this case, since we put equalization on it originally, let's put equalization on it again. So if I come to add effect, let's stick an Apple effect on there. Again, I'm on a Mac. So if you're on Windows, you're not going to have Apple effects. But let's put the a Apple graphic EQ on this. Now, right now, it's just sitting there. It hasn't done anything. You can see from the button here that it's enabled. I can disable that or I can enable it. Also, if I click this drop down arrow here, I can tell it no effect, which essentially removes it, or I can change it to a different effect if I want to. If I want to adjust the parameters of that effect, I simply click once on the effect itself and it opens up a window. Now I've got some presets in here. It looks like this is one of them that I've got. Let's just leave it right here for a moment. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn that off and I can do it right here on the effects window itself. And let's do this to get this back to the beginning. Because I want you to hear this waveform. I want you to hear this audio that I recorded both before and after I put EQ on it. So I'm going to press the space bar to play it and let's listen to it. Recording some audio here. I need some audio laid down so that I can do some stuff to it. And that's about the, that's about the extent of it. So that's about the extent of it. Let me put that back to the beginning. Pretty hollow, right? I mean, I was using the internal mic on my laptop and, you know, this isn't, this is a semi-treated room, but not really. And so it sounds kind of hollow. It sounds kind of, kind of bland. But what I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and enable this, this graphic EQ that I've got on here, this plugin that I've got on here, and I want to play it again. And let's listen to the difference. Recording some audio here. I need some audio laid down so that I can do some stuff to it. And that's about, the, that's about the extent of it. So again, that's about the extent of it. But, you know, I've got a little bit of EQ on here. I've rolled off the lower end. I've got a little bit of a bass boost on it. And then I've got a high-end shelf. Let's give it a little bit more bass here. And this is kind of probably going to be a little bit ridiculous. But let's do it anyway. I'm going to press the space bar and play. 
recording some audio here. I need some audio laid down so that I can do some stuff to it. And that's about the, that's about the extent of it. So let's say that we're happy with that and we're done with it. So we're going to close it out. Now you'll notice that the waveform didn't change. When I put that VST effect on there, that real time effect, the, it didn't touch the waveform. It didn't manipulate the waveform. If I save this project right now and then come back in five minutes later, or you know, save it and close it rather, and then I come back in five minutes later or five days later or five years later and I open up the same project, I can still manipulate it. I can tell it, well, I don't really want that graphic EQ on there. And so I can take it off. I can disable it. And I'm going to press the space bar again so you can hear the original recording. Recording some audio here. I need some audio laid down so that I can do some stuff to it. And that's about the, that's about the extent of it. So again, that's about the extent of it. So basically, when you get these stackable effects, if you had more than one effect here, you could drag them around. You could rearrange them. Let's say you wanted EQ first, which is typically what I do. I, I put EQ at the top of the chain. Then you can manipulate things around. You can add all kinds of different effects to it. For example, if I want to add another effect here, I can come down and I can put a band pass on it. Uh, I can keep, I can just keep stacking up effects on here like crazy. You know, I can put two EQs on it if I'm insane. But my point is, once I get them on here, I can enable and disable them here. If I have them all enabled and I want to disable the group, I click once here. Now the enable button stayed on for the individual effects, but they're not in play. They're not on the uh, track because I've disabled the master disable button up here. So let's re-enable that. And then just to demonstrate, I can drag these around. I can restack them. I can put them in different positions. If I want to change one, I can do it right here. And I can say, well, I don't really want that. Let's put this one on here instead. And so it's non-destructive in that way. Audacity 3.2.0 supports VST3 non-destructive plugins, and this is how you get to them. Now, just as a comfort thing, because if you're like me, sometimes if things change a little too fast, we don't like them. Just a reminder, I can still come up to the effect drop-down window, and I can apply things here in a destructive manner, just like before, if that's what I want to do. And at this time, uh, Audacity doesn't come with any VST3 effects included with it. That might change at some point in the future. I don't know. I hope it does. But there's so many VST effects out there, VST3 effects especially, that you can go get, you can grab, you can install them. Audacity will now recognize them and you can play around with them. So that's about all I had for you in this video. I want to thank you for watching and I hope this helps take some of the mystery out of what is going on with Audacity 3.2.0. So until next time, bye.